I need the microphone. Good biblical morning. Yeah. We're here. This yeah. is the fast oh. version. Good biblical morning. Ooh, yeah. Don't fit here. Ooh, it's the morning and it's good and it's biblical. It's good biblical morning. Good biblical morning. Okay. Hey. Good biblical morning. Welcome back. He hasn't even had any coffee. I have not. I literally just rolled out of bed. Slowly did everything with my left hand, and then we're ready. So I apologize for being a little bit late, but we are here. So good morning. Welcome back. Um, thank you for being here with us for Bible Read Along. We invite you to share this out. Unfortunately, Facebook has changed the way they do things. So to share this out, you actually have to exit the video. Um, or you have to do it after. So just a reminder, we'd love for you to share it out. Share thanks, it out Facebook. after. Yeah, thanks, Facebook. Always changing. I got an email notification last night. They're changing group settings again this coming week. On We'll have to figure out what that means. I think it sounds they like... They should just call Facebook the Alberta government. Yeah, just changing all the time. Um, but welcome back, guys. My name is Daniel. I love Jesus and love the lord and love my wife i love you she's here her what's your name i'm ashley i know it i didn't forget i promise but um <laughs> yeah we we are grateful you guys are here so comment let us know that you're here uh we always love to see you what are you laughing at i need to shave the sides of my head again <laughs> it's time to, it's, it's time is it so we got some people already in the chat good morning brian always good to have you here sunny in saskatchewan that's great because last week you guys were freezing cold without power so i'm glad to hear things are turning around morning matthew baker in Kelowna. we got all sorts of people joining us from all over the world melissa's here locally as well welcome we have valentina from california is here probably nice and sunny there probably sunny there Ashley sometimes shows me the weather of like California and Texas and like it wouldn't it be nice to be where it's warm and I'm like no stop it <laughs> this is be happy morning Phyllis I forget where you are maybe Australia but remind me if I am wrong but good morning good morning good morning we are just so glad you guys are here um Leanne from the Okanagan Penticton, I believe, of British Columbia. Morning, Rachel. So glad you're here. Rachel has been a friend of mine for many, many years. Oh, and yeah. forever. And so it's always really nice to see friends here and to see people joining us. So, and again, you can still share this video. You just have to exit to do it because I don't think there's a share button anymore. Yeah. There is not. Nope. And then Facebook is changing things again. So we'll roll with the punches next week and see what that means for our group. What is our group? Our group is Bible Read Along. In case you missed the jingle at the beginning. Good biblical morning. morning. Okay, Bible Read Along. So what do we do? We grab the Bible and we read along. I know it sounds really complicated. I wish I could come up with a name that was a little more self-explanatory, but... That's the best we had. So, Bible read along. Grab a Bible, grab a pen, grab a highlighter. Read along with us. Mike Markey mentioned yesterday how sarcastic I am. Yes, I am very sarcastic. In case you don't catch it, lots of sarcasm until we get in the Word of God and then I pretty much just preach it up. Preach it up. But today we are looking at Matthew, or not Matthew, Romans, Romans. chapter 5. Romans so please grab a Bible, grab a pen, highlighter, read along with us. It will be available on the screen as well. You know all the things. All the things. All the things we say every single morning. If you are new with us, comment below. We'd love to welcome you. And even if you are watching this in the future, the far future of the world, in a time different than this time because it's the future okay if you're watching in the future 
later today, later this week. I'm in a weird mood. Sorry. Um, later, later. If you're watching years later, comment. We still, if this is still up on the interwebs of the world, comment. We want to hear you. Let's pray. And then let's get into Romans chapter five. Uh, we're going to play prayer tag. It's a fun little game. It goes like this. You're it. Have you ever played Prayer Tag? It's a great game. <laughs> Thank you for, for staying. I just drooled all over you. I'm sorry. That's all right. Oh, thank you for Bible. Thank you for your word. Thank you for everyone that's joining us mm -hmm. and everyone that's not joining us who should be joining us. I mean, just bless everyone. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Tag. Hey. You're oh, right. I'm it. Tag, I'm it. Okay, it's Bible <laughs> Tag now. Um, if you know people that are not joining us that should be joining us, you know a great way to help solve that? Share. Okay. Um, share it out. Morning, John Paul. Glad to have you here. Morning, Maria. So glad to have you guys here again. Some local friends of ours that are joining in. Let's. Yes, we have friends. <laughs> I know, hard to believe if you're watching this for the first time, oh, <laughs> but we do, and we've been in lockdown, and we've been in quarantine, and all sorts of things for a very long time, so maybe we've gone a little weird here, but... I got coffee, I'm good. Let's head to the Bible. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Okay, we are now in the Bible. That was sound effects, high-tech sound effects. Romans chapter 5. And we will take turns reading this. We are reading from the NIV, New International Version. A um, little bit of the background. Paul's writing letters, often from prison. This is one of his letters to the Jewish slash Christian believers in Rome. And he is writing a letter. He's comparing. He, number one, he started by saying, we've all sinned. And there's different types of sin. People often want to go, oh, Romans 1 only highlights one type of sin. It does not. It highlights all of the sins. Um, and it says we've all done it. And we need a savior. Then we get into chapters 2 and 3 where it talks about the comparison of works and grace. Did you earn this? Is it a free gift? How do we receive it? We receive it by grace. We receive God's grace by faith rather. And, um, you know, he goes through that. Chapter 4, if you missed yesterday, that was a great chapter. Same thing. He's comparing again the circumcision, uncircumcision, works versus grace the gift of God. And then at the end, Paul slash Daniel preached up a storm about keeping your faith and not letting faith die even in hard times. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at today. Romans chapter five, peace and hope. Tag, you're it. My turn? Sure. <laughs> I'll let you talk now. Aww. I know. I'm so like, I, like aren't I just I can't even believe the this. most generous wow. ever. I just, wow. I know. It's a thing I do. I'm a giver. <laughs> oh, people watching this for the first time are like, what the heck is happening? I'm a giver. <laughs> okay. Peace and hope. <laughs> uh, that was my nervous laugh again. That's good. Therefore, <laughs> since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry, how have we been justified? Through faith. What does justified mean? Just as if I had. Never sinned. Never sinned. There it is. You're doing great. Thanks. <laughs> Through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Oh, hmm. that means you can brag about it. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character and character hope. I love that so much. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts. Through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. I love the phrase here, boast in the hope of the glory of God. What is that hope? That hope is Jesus. He, he died a sinless death, but he died the death of a criminal. And he rose again, victorious over death, the grave, and hell. Mm -hmm. And... Um, is now seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for us, the Bible says. 
Uh, so just very cool. That is the glory of God. Now let's put this into modern terms. Boast in the hope of the glory of God. In other words, talk about it all the time. Everywhere you go, anywhere you can, talk about it. Use your face hole. Use your face hole to share this out. Now, if we were to get really modern, Paul would be saying right now, at the bottom of this letter, click share. That's what he is saying right now. So that if we were to make this very modern, um, that's what he's talking about. And, and obviously, Paul's character said, you know, he did this. In jail, I'm going to boast about the goodness of Jesus' death, burial, resurrection. In good times, I'm going to boast about Jesus. In a shipwreck, I'm going to boast about Jesus. Stranded on an island with poisonous snakes, I'm going to boast about Jesus. Paul modeled this, so not only in word, but in, in action as well. Let's keep going here down to, we are at verse 6. Again, we welcome your comments. I know I make jokes and stuff, but if there's something um, that stands out to you, so even right now, Leanna actually put the, the, um, is this going to work? Yeah. I don't, it's working, but it just doesn't look very good. Um, justified, the, the technical term means rendered innocent. This is absolutely amazing because this is this is we're as we found out from romans 1 we're all guilty we all have sinned we all need jesus and so being rendered innocent we are declared innocent by jesus christ i'll move this out of my face so you can still see me here by we are declared innocent by the only judge who could actually declare us innocent and the only sacrifice the blood of jesus that could make us innocent this is just that word justified that's a big big word so thank you leanne verse 6 romans 5 verse 6 you see at just the right time when we were still powerless christ died for the ungodly you're welcome yeah very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Huge. Again, this isn't you didn't do it because you're so good. God didn't die. In fact, people don't die for good people often. You know, there might be some circumstances where it's like, no, kill me instead. He's a good man or he's whatever. But that's not the case. We were guilty as sin literally guilty as sin and jesus died for us verse nine let's there we go verse nine since we have now been justified by his blood how rendered much more, innocent mm -hmm, how much more shall we be saved from god's wrath through him for if while we were god's enemies we were reconciled to him through the death of, of his son how much more having been reconciled Shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Perfect. So now interesting here. And again, I've had some arguments. I, I like debating scripture, talking about scripture, but there was a debate I was in this last week that I didn't agree with. And actually, I didn't know how to fight it. But the more I go through scripture now, the more I'm like, there it is, there it is, there it is. Um, we've been justified by his blood. And some people would go then, see, we don't even need repentance. We don't need an altar call. We don't need to pray. We don't need to do anything because Jesus did die once for all. So either he died for all or he didn't. Um, this is called universalism. Everyone is saved. Everyone's going to heaven. Everyone. Now, I don't see that in scripture. Even here, we see we it's laid out that way. Jesus dies for all except through whom we have received. We still have to receive that gift. We don't get it just because we hang out with Christians. We don't get it just because Jesus died for all. There is a receiving process here that has to take place. We talked yesterday about God doesn't have grandkids. He has children. We have to personally have a relationship with him, not just be associated with that. So there, there's something that we have to do to receive this gift of God. Now, what is that? 
I'm gonna I'm I am going to agree with this other gentleman's argument a bit. It's not a special prayer that we pray like now it's time raise your hand. That might be the start of it, but that's not that's not what makes us saved. What makes us saved is faith. What justifies us is faith. Mm -hmm. Faith in what that God did something that he sent his son, that he died, that he rose again, that we can be justified. Our faith is what leads us to the grace of God, according to Paul. But faith, John says, faith without works, faith without an action is dead. So for many, their journey of faith started by saying, I raise my hand, I believe this. Yeah. I'll, I'll pray a sinner's prayer, even though it's that's what you do after that. that it's counts. now what you do with that. Mm -hmm. Is that real faith in you? If so, it's going to keep producing and keep growing. Um, we can't weaken in our faith. That's what we talked about yesterday. But that that's some um, thoughts there from me. Mm -hmm. So um, let's keep going, though. Where did we read here? We were just on death nine, didn't Adam. we? Okay, death through Adam and... Life through Christ. Here we go. You're up. <laughs> Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, Death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. Okay, Adam is a pattern of the one to come. Now, what is this talking about? It's actually going to compare two people here now. Adam, the first man created by God, and Jesus, which they refer to, as we'll get into more scripture here, as the second Adam. Because of Adam and Eve... But because of Adam, the first man, this is, again, it's not just about him as a person. This is showing it as a, as a picture, as a stereotype, as a pattern. So the first man disobeyed God and was in sin. And this revealed and actually welcomed into the world the, the sinful nature that we all carry. We are all sinful um. In, in our lives, we all make things, you know, some, even as little kids, I want to be careful how I word this because I believe the grace of God is bigger than I understand it. And so I'm not saying certain groups, others don't go to heaven or don't know the Lord, aren't saved. I don't know that God's grace is bigger than I could ever imagine. But as little kids, isn't it funny that often the word that our, our children first learn is no, no. no. No, there's this attitude of, no, I know what's best. No, me. No, mine. No, no, mine. And so we see the sinful nature in humanity right from, from early, early ages. Now, can God's grace cover that? Absolutely. Thank goodness, um, that's still me. And again, no. be because this isn't about that special prayer. Well, they never prayed that special prayer. So are they... I, God's grace, he just said here too, you know, where there is no law, even before the law, God's grace was there. Anyways, this, it's a lot to explain sometimes in Paul's writings because you really have to look at all of Paul's writings to kind of figure out what he's saying because he drops these bombs that just seem like one sentence and they're actually like huge theology debates. But anyways, let's keep going here. Do I need to scroll down more? Um, we're on 15. We are on 15. All right. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if, me if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? That's huge. So again, Adam, we're comparing Adam and Jesus. Adam... As a stereotype, as a pattern, he messed up for humanity. How many humans did that affect? Many, many, many. So how much greater, though, is life than messing up? How much more can the life of God impact many, many, many? That's all he's saying here. That's really good. That makes me think of like 
how much it, one person can impact a group of people. Man, one person. And I'm not referencing the COVID example they gave us last night. I'm no, but it, I'm you know, about like yeah, you, know, you, you have a, you have a. Let's say you have a Bible study and only one person shows up. That's okay. That's one person that you're sharing Jesus with. It's going to affect a multitude of more people. That's right. Be faithful. Yeah. And this is we talked about this in our celebrate recovery step study groups when we do our inventory we it's so easy to look at the bad i've done mm -hmm. oh i did so much bad so much bad often though we magnify the bad it was so awful so bad i feel so guilty and i've even personally myself gone to make amends and people go oh i don't even remember that you did that i didn't and it's haunted me for years and i felt like i ruined someone's life and they don't even know or or they just go oh yeah i forgive you i moved on from that a long time ago Okay, then we minimize the good we've done and we think, ah, oh, well, I haven't cured cancer. I haven't stopped COVID for the world. I haven't, you know, done all of these amazing big things. So we think they're not good. But instead, the people will remember, you know, I, I can tell many stories, but people can remember a simple action or word that you spoke to them that has changed their entire life. So we magnify the big, we minimize the good. Instead, we need to actually look at the good and go, wow, look how much good it could do. And that's what's happening with Jesus here. Mm -hmm. You know, sin, oh, sin is so great. We're so overwhelmed. Absolutely. Sin is awful. It separates us from God. It doesn't let us live our full life, our full potential. It hinders us. It hurts relationships. It hurts others. But we, we can't be so sin-focused that we miss the grace of God because the grace of God is huge. This is, it's overwhelming. If that sin impacted so many, how much more can the grace of God impact and change many? In fact, not only for many generations, it can impact us in a way that we go, I choose now to pick up my cross, deny my life of sin, my own desires, my own issues. I am going to live in a way that's changed because the grace of God has changed me. Yeah. Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> the judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man jesus christ amen and again i want to highlight one word here this is an action word we have to <laughs> receive <laughs> the gift of god because again the, the argument i was having and the false belief is well see jesus died for everyone and everyone it doesn't matter now it actually went this far that it doesn't matter what you do how you act in fact this guy went as far as to say all the Bibles are wrong and churches are wrong and everyone, all Christian history is wrong because we're actually just all saved because of what Jesus did. No, there is the power for all to be saved. We have to receive it. If my wife makes a meal, there is the power for all to be fed in the house. But if the kids choose not to come up out of their room, they do not receive the food that has been prepared. So same thing with Jesus. He has, there is the power for all to be justified. There is the power for all to be made right with God. There is the power for life to be changed. There is power for us to live godly lives, not only in this life, but the next. There is the power of God to change us if we come out of our rooms mm -hmm. and receive it anyways i'm i know i'm hidden on that a lot and the guy who i argued with i don't believe even watches this um because he doesn't agree with the bible so you know i want to teach you though because you're going to meet people like this in your in your lifetime you're gonna have this argument at some point where well if jesus if that's really that powerful isn't everyone just saved then why do we have to do anything we don't have to change it doesn't say that but we have to receive this abundant provision of grace. 
Let's finish up here. We're on the last little bit, guys. And you really need to go back to the Bible when someone challenges you like that, too, because he brought yes. a very good argument. He had a great argument. Yeah, I'm, I was thinking about it. Like, And this is a wow. guy I've known for many, many years. Many and good he, points. And that's why I listen, because he knows the Bible. He, he goes into things. Um, but I disagree with him. And... I can't just disagree based on my own opinion. I had to come now and study and start going, no, hold on. Here's some key verses about salvation. They all indicate, even John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that whoever believes, there's an action word here that has to take place. Now, does it say whoever prayed a prayer at the front of a church? No, it doesn't say that. But that could be, a step in that direction of belief. Mm -hmm. If we have belief, it has an action. Anyways, that there's so many like so even right to John 3:16, I'm seeing no, this is not correct because there's there's a conditional phrase in the sentence. This is in English, that's what you would talk about. There is a conditional phrase. So, I'll give you a million dollars if that's a conditional phrase. You have to do something to get that. Jesus is saying the same thing. The word of God says the same thing. There is an amazing gift of grace available if you believe. And if you believe it, you receive it, you allow it to change. Anyways, that's, let's finish this. <laughs> <laughs> Consequ consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. So again, and see, this is, if all we took was that verse, it sounds like Adam sinned, so everyone sins, but now Jesus is the righteous sacrifice, so everyone's clean. But we, again, context, we have to read the Bible in context, because if all that was is just the verse that we just read, the, the gentleman I was arguing with is right. It doesn't say all anyways. It says the many will be it made It says righteous. for many. You are, you're right, actually. Right? You are right. Absolutely. So, I wasn't trying to... No, you're right. I there, There's even in that is the argument of it doesn't say for all. It says for many. Mm-hmm. But, Which you know, is he is taking saying, it you as... You still have to make the choice. That's right. And depending on the translation, he, he took it as all and all. Um, I see foul beliefs in that. Mm -hmm. All right. Last little bit. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through the righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mm -hmm. You got to make him our Lord. Again, there it is. Um, we can be made right. We can be changed by Jesus Christ. But there is an action that is required. It requires a belief on our part. Belief without action is dead. It's dead belief. So there it is. Let's look at some chat we i see some points in there what do, what do you guys think maybe you disagree with me and you're going no the power of jesus is actually for all and all are saved i'd love to hear your point even if we disagree obviously in bible read along i do share my own opinion um but i i would gladly have a conversation with you uh that's going to be a lot nicer than my public opinion when we talk one-on-one -on -one and communicate and work through the scriptures. So if you have a disagreement, please comment that as well. We would love or questions or questions. Um, but what stood out to you today? I want to hear, even if you don't have anything, just type. That's good. I agree. Type something in today. Cause I'd love to hear from anyone who's watching. How many do we got about just over a dozen here? Type it in. Let us see it. Um, Again, as you're doing that, I'll stall for a minute. We have people joining us literally from all over the world. We also have Home of Hope. Um, I'm not going to show the video, but we have Home of Hope that you can go visit. 
homeofhope.ca. That's the website. I know this is a terrible screen right now because normally it would have a video playing, but go visit homeofhope.ca. They're a great organization that is helping um, people around the world. And you can give a one-time gift. You can give an ongoing gift. We sponsor a child and through that, an orphan. I actually got to meet my child when I was in Kenya. Uh, this is a person, young man now, almost 14, that both his parents have died. And he has been raised now through our program and has been provided school, been provided education. He's smart. He's funny. Um, he's, he's a humble kid. He was amazing to me. I mean, there's, there is just something amazing about meeting your own sponsor kid. And that impacted me, but we'd love to hear from you guys too. And, uh, go check out homeofhope.ca. See what you can do. Little bits help. Every little bits help. All right. Let's go to some comments. So I'm going to scroll up here. Uh, Leanne, I'm so grateful for what you are sharing with us here as well. Um, oh, it's working already. So again, talking about justified, saved by his life, Christ shed his blood to pay the death penalty earned by our sins. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is in his resurrection life that we also have life. Amen. So good. Uh, Maria says this in compared to we can't um, earn it. We can't work for it. God loves you for who you are, not what you do. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. He, In fact, he loves us. The Bible just said in Romans 5 despite what we did, that we had sin, 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 and he still, while we were enemies of God, it says separated from him, he loved us enough that he sent his son. Now, the good news is if we receive his love, it changes us out of that life of sin. We can no longer keep living a sinful life if we are truly being changed, continually ongoing process by the love of God. So thank you, Maria. That is a great comment as well. Um, did you have something to say? No. Matthew says, I love how God the Father forgives people when they sin. God is good all the time. Um, he also said here, interesting. Oh, did I push the right button? Uh, I don't like sin at all, and I wish that I hadn't sinned in my life. Now, the good news is as we receive, Matthew, that love of God. See, this is where sometimes even in recovery, uh, let me say even in my own recovery, there was a long time in my own recovery, I was very sin focused. Stop doing bad. Stop doing bad. Stop doing bad. Stop doing bad. Stop. Oh, bad, bad, bad. But when you're thinking of that, the subject that you're thinking of, this is now getting into neuroscience, but the subject you're thinking of is still bad. That's the topic of what you're thinking of. Instead, when I was able to change my thinking instead of bad Dan, bad Dan, bad Dan into good God, loving God, changing life, changing God, life giving God, it empowered me to walk away from the bad without being it, the being the focus of what I was thinking of. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, so how do we stop living a sinful life? Because we are, we sin. I sin, you sin, there's sins. Um, we, we don't stop by white knuckling and holding on. Oh, I got to stop. I got to stop. I got to stop. That'll only work for a limited amount of time. What empowers you is going, God has empowered me to stop this. I don't have to do this thing. There is the power of God in me to live my life full of grace, full of hope, full of faith in a way that changes me and changes others. Mm -hmm. So I hope that encourages you, Matthew, as well. Um, man, oh, this is Carolyn. I thought it was Leanne again. Carolyn says, sorry, we're still here. Um, conviction of sin produces repentant heart. Oh. A repentant heart to ask for forgiveness, which opens the door to Jesus and his gift forgiveness by his blood which covers us with righteousness and gives new life 
setting us free from the condemnation sin brought. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Amen. That's you just again, you guys are preaching the gospel here. I love it. Share some of these things to your own mm -hmm. Facebook. Share it to your friends. Um, Matthew, I'm not going to say the name of the person I'm arguing with. I don't feel that that's the right thing to do because this isn't about shaming him. Or, it wasn't necessarily an argument anyway, no, so this is a healthy debate. It was a healthy debate. I mean, we had a good talk. I think we walked away and actually, I, you know, we said, you know, we'll have to agree to disagree, but I still love you, man. And God's moved in our lives and we have a past and a history and I love you. Um, there it is. And Mike, to finish it off, says, really good this morning. <laughs> Isn't that true? So good. Thank you, Mike, for your encouragement. Mike faithfully messages and, and sends audio to encourage us. Uh, thank you guys for being here. We are out of time. Share it out. Um, spread the word. Bible read along is for everyone because Jesus is for everyone. And so we would love to just see more people here, not because look at us. Ooh, we want numbers. Like we just said, we never know the good we're doing. We never know one life could be impacted that could be the next Billy Graham. That could be the next, you know, Reinhard Bonnke that is preaching to millions and millions of people before they passed away. Um, you never know. And or not even that extreme because we always go to those extremes. This could be your family member that hears this, that cousin, that aunt, that uncle, that mother, father, brother, sister, that you never thought would turn their lives to Jesus and suddenly their life changes mm -hmm. and they live a godly life. That is just, by the way, that is just as powerful as being a Billy Graham or you do what God has called you to do. And if you're doing that and your life's been changed by Jesus, that's just as powerful as what the preachers of the past have done. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, God bless. And we will see you. No, not tomorrow. We are not here tomorrow. We'll we do a early, post as well. Early appointment in the city. I have a doctor's appointment in Calgary, so we have to get there. We have to drive two hours to get there. So um, we will not be here for Bible read along tomorrow, but we will be back Friday. God willing. God bless. We will talk to you soon. Thank you.